Today's question makes me smile. Here's the question. Why are there different spiritual and faith traditions? And are any of them the truth? Well, you know, there is this, um, you see the history of the inquiry by the ancestors of present day humanity it goes back 50,000 years, if you can believe that. 50,000 years there is evidence of a ritualistic sacred burial. It indicates that there was some thought of something beyond the world of mud and eating animals and whatever, you know. So we have an extraordinary um, history of uh, exploration of the human condition, of the human circumstance. This inquiry seems to be even precede uh, recorded time. Let's call it 50,000 years, seems to be roughly uh, agreed on. And out of this comes something called the great tradition, or if you will, the perennial philosophy. And the great tradition, of course, is a way of referring to not only the world religions, but the many, many tens of thousands of approaches that humanity has made to understanding not only the human circumstance in relative terms, but positing something beyond something that's maybe not understandable, mystical, mysterious, unknowable, something beyond the human condition. We seem to have this idea always something more than just us. Could be in the sky, could be in the ground, could be another dimension, could be an alien. You know, who knows, but it's always some other place for some reason, you, you notice. And even when uh, we've devised out of, a, from a cultural basis, because I mean, look at the Tao Te Ching, look at the Bible, look at the, the holy books and so on, and what you see straight away is the cultural inflections. People didn't think like that or look at it this way from the Middle East if they lived in the Indus Valley or if they lived in Egypt you see they looked at it a different way and so on and so on so when you look at these things they are uh, soaked in cultural references and one of the things we've done today is we've taken those cultural references and we've made a fetish of them you know this must be a good thing because it's kind of Indian and uh, God must live in India and uh, or maybe it's a pyramid or you, you see what I mean, maybe it's a crucifix or something. They're kind of fetishes or symbols or talismans or things that we take and become very serious about um, in order to imply or indicate something of our spirituality. Now there's a difference we're making these days, and I think it's helpful, it's regrettable, but it's helpful, and the difference is between religion and spirituality. And I'd refer you to a vlog which I can always still, a blog, sorry, which I can always remember the title of, which is uh, You Cannot Organize a Storm. And this is something I wrote on the, the subject, I think, of religion and spirituality. And that's to say, in short, that as soon as you take the mystery of spirituality, the real expansiveness of sourcelessness that is the divine realms, and you organize it into dogma and stories and narrative and some book, you're in trouble because you've just beaten the thing to death. You've stuck a, a pin in it, you put a frame around it, it's under glass, and you put it on the wall. It's a museum piece, you see. Now, people may argue against this and tell you of the living, this, that, and the other that's uh, inherent in the um, rituals and the ceremonies that are involved in their organization of the spiritual that we call religion. And I, I would have no judgment in the sense that, you know, if you feel the living spirit there, the living divine there, of course, 
you know, run with it, go with it, that's your calling, that's it. But in the world of spirituality, I suggest, or true spirituality, or the authentic moving into the mystery as a present experience in this life before your physical death. No dogma, no fetish, no amulet or talisman, no book, no belief, and no faith is remotely relevant to the truth. Now, I'm not the first person to say this. We've had a, a century of it being indicated or implied or said, perhaps most famously by J. Krishnamurti, there's no path to the truth. Not everything Krishnamurti said was necessarily um, true, and uh, you know, I'm sure he'd be happy that we could pull apart some of his thought and think it through. But that, it seems to me, and it seems to many, and I agree with them, is right on, right on the button. There's no path to truth. Therefore, I always apologize inwardly, sometimes outwardly, about talking about these things. Because as Ramana Maharshi said, the, the, the teaching is, the true teaching is in mana, which is silence. There's nothing you can say about the unspeakable mystery of God. Nothing at all. So all we do is we have some fun with descriptions. I think we kind of, we like the poetry. We like the poet sometimes. We like the expression. We like to dance or recite the poetry or we like the music of it all and that's really what it is the reality is no dogma no belief no faith although i think we should and we do see in the religious traditions very often uh, some taste something coming through it can't be entirely quashed you say can't be entirely quashed these uh, thought systems, belief systems, faith systems didn't arise from nothing at all. And sometimes some of them are a little closer to the living truth of the divine than others, which would be a long discussion. Some of them are closer. Some of them are very far away because they've been beaten more effectively to death in terms of real spirituality. Some have struggled and tried. As soon as you organize, as soon as you create a community, as soon as you create a center or a, some kind of central teaching, you have to take a lot of care that you don't produce uh, clones and you don't produce yes people and you don't produce believers and people who won't think for themselves, won't feel for themselves. Uh, it's a danger, and you can see how it could be taken advantage of, because it most certainly has, over hundreds and hundreds of years. But whilst there may be the smidgen or even some shard of light coming through a religious tradition, the great tradition of humanity, I would say it deserves our respect, it deserves our honor, it deserves our reverence. And for heaven's sake, let's go past it now. Because otherwise we are stuck in the past. It's not worth living in the past any more than it's worth living in the future. There's only one place to live, right? <laughs>